Hello, this is the screencast for Unit 4, and this will be sections 4.1 through 4.4, and Unit 4 is on chemical reactions. Here's a few optional videos that you can watch. And Unit 4 is typically 7 to 9% of AP exam weighting. Section 4.1 is on introduction for reactions. The learning objective is identify evidence of chemical and physical changes in matter. Uh, the essential knowledge is physical change and chemical change. Uh, for a physical change, you have the same substance in a different form. Uh, common examples would be the phase changes, you know, melting, freezing, uh, vaporization, condensation. Um, so you get the same substance, just uh, it's just changing form. You could also say, you know, a breaking, bending, cutting, shredding, things like that. A chemical change, you have a, a chemical reaction taking place. So you get a new substance that's forming. And you want to know the indicators of chemical reactions. And, and those would be a change in color, a change in odor, a change in temperature, a gas being produced, and you would see that with bubbles that are forming, uh, light emitted, or a precipitation forming in a reaction. Section 4.2 is on net ionic equations. The learning objective here is to represent changes in matter with a balanced chemical or net ionic equation. A for physical changes, B for given information about the identity of the reactant and or product, and C for ions in a given chemical reaction. So the first essential knowledge is, is just being able to balance equations. And then the rest of it, uh, you want to be able to, to write out molecular equations, complete ionic or net ionic. Uh, in a molecular equation, there's an example right here. It just shows all the substances together as either a, a formula unit or, or a, a molecule. So um, everything is together, including uh, you know, strong acids like H2SO4 or strong bases, KOH, um, ionic salts like K2SO4. Everything stays together. So you indicate the, the formula for the substance and whether it's solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous. That's probably the most common type of reaction, the one you're probably most familiar with. For a complete ionic, there's an example of a complete ionic equation right here. Um, that's going to show how they actually are in, in the reaction, in, in the solution. So any aqueous salts will break apart into ions. Um, strong acids, strong bases will break apart into ions like this, H2SO4 breaks apart into two hydrogen ions and the sulfate ion. So anything aqueous will break apart into their individual ions. And a subscript like this H2 will turn into a coefficient in the complete ionic equation. So you indicate how many of each ion you have. You want to indicate their charge. Um, but when you write out complete ionic, Solids and liquids will stay together as a molecule. So this 2H2O stays together in the complete ionic reaction. And then for net ionic, to go from uh, complete ionic to net ionic, uh, we want to cancel out spectator ions. And spectator ions are, are just uh, species that don't change over the reaction. So in this case, we have uh, sulfate and potassium that are spectators. So they get canceled out. And then we're only showing the substances that are changing in the reaction. So we get rid of those spectators and this is all that's left for the net ionic. Four point three is on representations of reactions. The learning objective here is represent a given chemical reaction or physical process with a consistent particulate model. And the essential knowledge is, is just simply showing symbolic particle representations. Now, one thing you want to be careful of here is, um, you know, make sure you, you pay attention to the number of reactants and products in the drawing. 
and make sure they represent the mole ratios for the, the reaction that's taking place. And the, the symbolic representations, in this case, it's just circles representing the atoms. It could be any sort of symbol that represents what's happening, though. But please pay attention to the, the number of, of each reactant and product and make sure it corresponds to the mole ratios. And then 4.4 is on physical and chemical changes. The learning objective is explain the relationship between macroscopic characteristics and bond interactions for chemical processes and physical processes. So the essential knowledge here, in, in a chemical process, um, you want to know that um, in any chemical process, you're either breaking or forming intramolecular bonds, as in ionic or covalent bonds, bonds within molecules. In a physical process, that is uh, when we're breaking or forming intermolecular forces, you know, hydrogen bonds, dipole, dipole, London dispersion forces. So that's kind of the key information there. Chemical bonds, it's intramolecular physical process that's intermolecular. Um, but also you want to understand salt dissolving um, is kind of a gray area. You know, not everything fits um, into a nice neat box all the time. Salt dissolving is kind of in between these two. It's generally considered a, a physical change. But um, when salt dissolves, and there's a picture of it over here, you're breaking ionic bonds, which is an intramolecular force, you know, that goes along with chemical processes. And then you form ion dipole bonds between the water molecules and the, the individual ions. So it's kind of in between the two, but, uh, but generally salt dissolving is considered a physical process. Um, I guess that's all for today. Have a good day. Bye.